بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد على آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Tonight we'll talk about a very notorious lady before Islam, very dangerous against Muhammad Wasallam and the Muslims in general. Her name is Hind bin Utba bin Rabia bin Abd Shams al Qurashiya. Before Islam, she was very known, and of course, when she became Muslim, she was also very known. She was the mother of the Khalifa and the Emir of Mu'mineen, Mu'awiyah radiallahu anhu arda, the writer of the Wahi, the writer of the revelation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa She also, during the battle of Uhud, she contributed in the killing of Hamza radiallahu anhu arda. She did even take the noses and the, and the, and the ears of the Muslims as souvenirs when they were killed. She also contributed in many, she contributed many, many verses, many poems against Islam and Muslims and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This lady, let's start by her story first. As a Qurashi lady of a noble family, which is related to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa but not very close to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi Born in Mecca. And when she was born in Mecca, her father married her to a man. This man was very, very generous. So much so that he had a special place. And this is, by the way, the practice of some of the Arabs nowadays. They had a special place for guests. Open. Come at any time. Eat, drink, free. So he had this, uh, this type of, of accommodation, especially for the guests. Now, when she was with the husband, the husband, of course, as we said, very generous person, and well known amongst the Arabs, especially the Meccan people, with his generosity. And also... Uh, Older than, than this lady. Hint. One day, he's from Bani Makhzum, the husband. One day, he thought of relaxing with his wife at the guest house. So they sat together, she relaxed, he relaxed, and then she fell asleep. When she fell asleep, uh, he remembered something, so he left. Now this house is a guest house. People come without knocking the door. So a man entered the house. When he entered the house, he saw a lady. He didn't know who's, who, who was there. When he saw the lady, he immediately said to himself, why, why should I enter? Then he left very quickly. When he was leaving, the husband saw him. So the ill thinking now happened. He didn't stop to talk to him, to say that it was a mistake, I don't know who was there, and uh, I don't know that you closed it or something of, a, of any excuse. He didn't say that. He left very quickly, flee. The husband immediately came, and when he came, he kicked Hint, his wife, his leg, and she woke. He said, what? He said, who were there a while ago? She said, he said, who, who was there a while ago? She said, I don't know. I've never seen anyone. She, he said, no, there was someone here a while ago, and you did something with him. Go to your father. Now, she lived to her father. Of course, she didn't know what happened. Really what happened, why is he accusing her of that, because he saw a man or not, so she didn't know that. Now, when this happened, 
she went to her father and stayed at her father's house. People started to talk. When they started to talk, her father, Utba, said to her, Now tell me, seriously, if you did it, because people are talking now, if you did it, we'll send someone to assassinate him. So we could stop it. And if you, don't, if you didn't do it, tell us. We could go to one of the uh, magicians, one of the, orac- one of the oracles, one of the orators, we can ask them and uh, see. She said, Wallahi, I didn't do it. She had the oath with the, uh, using the same as the, as the uh, non-Muslims at that time will use. Of course, with Allah wa Al-Uddha. She didn't use Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name. And her husband, of course, when he spread the news, uh, Utbah, his name is, uh, he's from Bani Makhzum. His name is Utbah uh, bin Mughirah al-Makhzumi. When the news spread, of course, her, his family is supporting him. And her family couldn't say anything. So now, one of her family is to stand against this man. And then they said, okay. The father said to all the Qurashi people, now someone is talking about my, my own daughter. And everything he said is, is lie. And we prove this through going to one of the oracles of, of Yemen. They said, okay, we'll accept that. So the family of the husband left, the family of the wife left, and there are a group of ladies with, with Hind. Now Hind, with a group of ladies going there, leaving of course together, after days they arrived near the place of this oracle from Yemen. When they arrived, by the way, the oracles of the magicians, Arabs used to go for them for judgments. And most of them at that time, magicians will use jinns to tell them about what happened. So will, they will be confirming, not because they know the unseen, because the unseen, the unseen is two. Complete unseen and partial unseen. The complete unseen is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I tell you, what is going to happen tomorrow in Lebanon? Say, I don't know. What's going to happen tomorrow at your house? So, well, apart from the normal thing, you don't know. This is the future. Allah knows it. But if I tell you what happened in your house five minutes ago, this is the partial one. Because someone knows. Because there's someone there. Or maybe someone there. There should be someone who's knowing that. If it's in the past... And there's someone knowing it, it's not unseen totally. There's some, someone who would know it about it. It's just like if I tell you now, that I've been told now, I'm here all the, all the, day, I mean, all the prayers about, now we have 20 minutes or so, more than 40 minutes in the mosque. And if I tell you 10 minutes ago, someone broke into such and such place and happened such and such thing. That's not unseen, especially nowadays. Maybe someone called me. But during those days, it is something, wow, how do you know? They used to use the jinns to tell him. Especially of the incidents. That's why when you go to a magician, how do you know? They will ask you about what is your mother. And they will tell you your past life. They tell you, yeah, that's right. So they convince you that they know everything about you. And then you get, you get fooled by what they tell you about. Now, when they arrived very close by the, um, the magician or the oracle, now, they said, she, she, she started to cry. And then when she started to cry, her father, Utbah, who was one of the leaders of Quraysh, said, why didn't you do that before? Why are you retreating now? She said, I'm not retreating because I'm afraid that I did it. No. I'm retreating because I'm afraid that if he could be wrong and say it in a wrong way, and you will be, I will be defaming the whole family. I don't want to do that. 
She's not only concerned about her own self, but also for the family. Then he said, no, don't worry about this. I'll sort this out. I'll figure out if he's a liar or truthful. Soon they arrived. He took his his horse or donkey aside and put inside the vagina of the donkey a seed of wheat. Wrapped it and left it. He went to the to the to the oracle and then said for the magician and then said to him, Okay, before we start, I I kept something for you as a secret. He said, Well, then he told him, It's a seed inside a female horse. He said, That's right. Then now tell us about these ladies. So they have all the ladies. He doesn't know Hint. Now, and have never ever met Hint. Now, he's, he's to, to tell them whether she is or she is not guilty. Now, every, every now and then she'll, he'll pass uh, the, um, near a lady, touch her shoulder in the back and say, free, pure. And when he comes near Hint, just imagine what would the father think, what would the husband think, because the husband wanted to be confirmed, and the father wanted to be disconfirmed. Then when he touched her, and of course he said to them, Stand, you are pure. Then when he came to near to her, Stand, you are pure of the purest. Not like other ones. And, you will have, you will give birth to a king. Then immediately, the husband grabbed her. Then she says, no, no, just leave me. And if, I want, if, if there will be a, a son, I don't want him to be from you. A king, I don't want him to be from you. I'll, I'll never have anything to do with you. So she left him. Now, when she left him, two of the well-known and, and famous Arabs came to ask her hand. When they came to ask her hand, she was so intelligent, by the way, very intelligent, described by many historians as one of the intelligent ones. She said to her father, "The first one, you, mar- you made me marry. You made me marry him without my concession. Now the second one, second marriage, you need to tell me and consult me." He said, "All right." Now two persons came to ask her hand, and then her father is also very intelligent. He said. I'll give you the description of them, not their names. Then he started describing the first one. He said, the first one, very generous, very handsome, and of the elites, very good to his family, feeds them good, takes care of them, and if his wife wanted to do anything, he wouldn't object. And then mentioned something along those lines. The second one, of the elite, very intelligent, very tough, and if his family are not going the right way, he will straighten them. And if he doesn't like anything, not his way, he will make it his way. Very tough, and sometimes he will beat. And then she said, well, if I choose the first one and I have children from him, they will be stupid. Because I will be the one who is looking after everything. Uh, it will be everything uh, will be will be my way, and I want someone to to deal with me, to have the other side. And then she said, the other one, very intelligent, and this is the one that fits me. Then, she, then he said, that's Abu Sufyan bin Harb. She said, I accepted him. Now she is married. She married to Abu Sufyan. When she married to Abu Sufyan, Abu Sufyan, by the way, is one of the well-known leaders of, of Quraysh. He knows poetry, and he says poetry. He's one of the rare orators who would be in the battlefield killing people to fight, and they will be fighting because of his words. He encourages them to do that. Especially during al when he was encouraging them. She was encouraging them to fight for Allah almost 
many years after when she embraced Islam, and Abu Sufyan was, was also there. Now, she married to Abu Sufyan, then gave birth to Muawiyah, then gave birth also to Yazid, all of them the sons of Muawiyah. Now, of course, the king that they predicted was Muawiyah, who was one of the writers of, of, of Wahy, the revelation of Muhammad sallallahu and one of the fuqaha. Now, when, when she married to Muawiyah, of course, then giving birth to Yazid, uh, she married to Abu Sufyan, then giving birth to Yazid, etc., and Muawiyah, Muhammad sallallahu religion emerged. She immediately objected Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's religion. She was very tough in what she believes in. And not only those who are on the line, on the fence, because some people are on the fence. They are with their people, but they don't support them. Just like you see the Muslims. Yeah, Muslims, but when it comes, we're just in the fence. We don't make it clear that we are with Muslims, and we don't make it clear that we are against Muslims. You have to make it clear that you are with the Muslims. In any form, of course, peaceful way. Now, when this lady saw Muhammad sallallahu alaihi she objected Muhammad sallallahu alaihi with all means, and of course, her husband, the same, both of them the same. Now, Abu Sufyan, if you remember, was the leader of the expedition coming from from uh, from Ashan from Damascus, through Medina, then <coughs> to Mecca, when it was to be attacked, and the Battle of Badr happened. And then her father was killed in the Battle of Badr. When the news came, I mean, before that, one thing that I should mention, when she was in Mecca, of course, she, of course, of course contributed in the persecution of Muslims, in everything. By her words and also by the by actions. When Muhammad Sallallahu was besieged inside Shab Amr with his family from Banu Hashim, only one from Banu Hashim, only one person did not go with him. That was Abu Lahab. She met Abu Lahab, and then Abu Lahab said, "Hint, I didn't go with him." He said, "May Allah reward you for that." He said, "I want to make it clear that I am with you." Look at this. He made it clear that he is with them. If you know something supporting, for example, a, a company supporting people bombing Muslims somewhere, you make it clear that you are against this by not buying them, for example. Even if it's up to yourself, you just make it clear that you are against it. You are with the, right, with the justice or with the just issue. Okay. Now, when Muhammad وسلم, migrated and left Medina, left Mecca, sorry. When he left Mecca, his daughter, Zainab, was married to one from Mecca. It's, it was actually one of her cousins. One of Khadija's uh, nephews. Now, she couldn't leave first, and then she decided to go. When she wanted to go, he knew that she's, she's going. She came to her. Subhanallah, there are some passionate moments at the life of any red-headed or strong-headed person. Just like Umar radiallahu anhu Allah. One day he saw a lady uh, who would be migrating and leaving Mecca for Abyssinia. And when she, was, when he was, when, when she, when she left, she said to her, Hassan, don't make Umar see us. Now, when she was leaving, She left. After that, she forgot something. Her son, she said, he said, I'll go back and, and take it. And on the way back, Omar saw him. And he said to him, where are you going? He said, we're going for Abyssinia. You persecuted us. He said, well, okay, may peace be with you. Then when he talked, when she talked, or he talked to, 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 to his mother, he said, well, I, I will not ever think that the donkey of the son of Al-Khattab will embrace Islam. Not even, don't tell me that Umar is 
you're, you're, you're thinking that Omar might embrace Islam. Because this might tell that Omar might embrace Islam. And later he decided to kill Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Now, this lady, Hind, she was very, very passionate. And when she saw Zainab, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa daughter, she went to her and said to her, you know, what happened between us ladies is different from what happened between men. She is her cousin. She said to her, if you need anything, tell me. I'll help you out. Zainab said, Wallahi, I knew that she is truthful. Because she was, she was proposing to help. But she said, I was afraid that she might tell others. So I said, no. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm thinking of something else. Now what happened? The, uh, the brother of, of, of her husband, Zainab's husband, took Zainab, wanted to leave Mecca for Medina. And it was midday. So the Qurashi people stopped. And then he said, he had his arch, he said, Wallah, if anyone comes near me, I'm going to kill all of you. Then Abu Sufyan came. When Abu Sufyan came, he said, no, no, let's talk. And then he approached him. And he said to him, don't do this just broad daylight. We, we, don't want, we have nothing to do with his daughters. We are Arabs. We don't want Arabs to talk about us and say that he is butchering us and taking us prisoners of war there and will let his own children go. You don't do it at night. And now Arabs, all of them are known that we are letting her leave at broad daylight. You should stay a few days till people stop talking and sneak at night without anyone knowing it. Don't do it like this. And trust me, if you do it, we'll try to hide it. Just, just go. That's Abu Sufyan. Now, because this is, sometimes you have uh, a genuine, authentic uh, kind of, 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 of love toward the pride of, of the tribe. He was looking after the pride of the tribe. They don't want to talk, to, to do something against the daughter of, because she's the daughter of someone. And not like others, they will be jailing and bombing everyone. No, no. Bombing everyone because they are related or not related to the person. No. For example, if, uh, if someone did something, they will come and just smash the whole house. That, has nothing, that, that, that is not part of the genuine good nature of any human being. You deal with the person who is dealing with you. So they dealt with Muhammad Not with his, even his daughter was a Muslim. She was a believer, radiallahu anhu wa Then after a few days, she lived. SubhanAllah, at the same time, Muhammad sent Zayd, Haritha, and others to bring them, bring his, uh, his daughter. So she came with Zayd, radiallahu anhu wa Now, after the, the incident of Badr, when Abu Sufyan returned back, and as we said, her, her father, Utbah, was killed in the battle, she decided, because when they arrive from the battle, and the Qurashi people will see the camel of such and such person, the ladies will scream and tear their clothes. And when, she, when the battle, when, when the when the um, when the when the camel and horse of her own father came, she did not even shed one tear. And then she said, "I don't want to shed one tear. So if Muhammad knows about it." To say, see what we did to her. She cried. She said, no. I will not give them that victory. I will not touch any oil, perfume, or even sleep with my husband till we revenge. And she, they started to prepare all the Arabs and everyone with them. She talked to Wahshi. Wahshi is the slave of Jubair ibn Mutayn. And he was very good in Killing with the spear. He's an Abyssinian. Very black. She said to him, if you kill him, kill Hamza. He's related to Muhammad. If you kill him, I'm going to make you free and give you many things. He said, okay. Wahshi, who later embraced Islam, he said, I went with them, not for anything, but for killing Hamza and getting my freedom. Now, when they decided to go, 
to go and take ladies with them in the battlefield. They're going from Mecca to Medina to fight Muhammad Sallallahu in the Battle of Uhud. When they decided to, that, to do that, and ladies to be going with them, Iqbal ibn Abi Jahl and many others said, we don't want ladies to go with us. Now, the, there are a couple of ladies, about 15, wanted to go. He said, no, we don't want them to go with us. We want you to stay back. He said, no, if we're going with you, we're going with you. And she convinced all of them. She said, are you afraid that you might lose the battle? She, because she knows how to talk. They said, okay, just come with us. She convinced them. Now they went. And on the way when they approached Medina, she said, al Abwa, which is where Muhammad's mother grave is there. She said, why don't we, where is the mother, his mother's grave? We want to dig it and take the remains. So if something happened, we'll exchange the remains with the prisoners of war. And then people came running to Abu Sufyan. I said to Abu Sufyan, look what your wife is saying. Tell her, she, she's, she's, she is proposing this. And he said, wow, that's a very strange one. We shouldn't even think of this. Why we shouldn't think of this? Because if we do this, our enemy would do the same to us. We shouldn't do that. It's not because they are desecrating the graves. It's not because they are doing something morally wrong. Because they don't want others to do it to them. And to take the remains of such and such. To them and just exchange it. Just like what, what's happening nowadays. Remains or remains. Now, he said no. So the idea was cancelled. Now when, the, when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi back in Medina. Telling the Sahaba about this, the, the dream that he saw. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, I saw uh, cows being slaughtered. And also, I saw uh, a very slight uh, thing in my sword. And I saw that I am in a very fortified castle. He said, what, well, have, what did you interpret that with? He said, that the, I interpreted that the slaughter in my own people. And the thing in my sword is one of my relatives will be, there will be, one of my relatives will be harmed. And then he said, they said also, what, what did you interpret the fortified place? He said, Medina. But the Sahaba, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wanted to fight an urban war inside Medina. But the Sahaba said, we want to go outside. Especially those who did not contribute in the battle of Badr. They wanted to go on revenge as well. Because they are coming to them to fight them. Now Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, okay, we'll go and fight outside Medina. But when they said, maybe we forced Muhammad to go outside, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we'll tell him to come, to just make it inside. He said, no, Allah, it's been decided, we'll go outside. Now, when they had the place, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arranged the army, and he told them specific orders. The army of the Muslims was 1,000. And when they were going, just near the battle place, 300 of them defected. How did they? Ibn Ubay ibn Salul, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, he's the leader of the Munafiqeen, the hypocrites, said, well, I'll just, well, I will go with my, with my own people because there wouldn't be any fighting. Why should we bother? We'll just leave. Muhammad was angry. The Sahaba told him, let's fight them. These are now our enemy. From within. He said, no, no. What would people say that we are killing our own people? Because they don't differentiate people from outside. Now, he said, no, just leave. 700 people with Muhammad wasallam, And 3,000 from the Qurashi tribe. Coming to fight Muhammad wasallam. Of course, they have their drums with them. To urge the, 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 um, the, uh, the army everything to urge the army. At, at the start of the battle, Muslims were winning the war. And Hamza was doing a lot to them. Hamza radiallahu anhu arda was just doing a lot to them to an extent that no one could stop at his, at his face. No one. There was some one of the mushrikeen who used to come to any one of the Muslims 
who's been injured and just cut his throat. And he was doing a lot to many Muslims. And then Hamza saw him. Hamza came to him and he cut his throat. He said when Hamza hit his throat, I thought that he didn't touch him. But it was so quick that the person st- stood. And then afterwards, everything just like what you see in the, in the, uh, in the cinemas. It was true. Because it was so quick and so sharp that the head stayed for a while and then fell. Now, and then he came very near to the place of the ladies. And of course, he doesn't know who's coming with them. And he was about to hit the lady. Who was that lady? Hint. Then he stopped because he was a lady. He said, I don't want to, to kill a lady in the battlefield. Then he left. While he was doing this, Wahshi, of course, very near. He was hiding behind the tents. When he saw Hamza, he hit Hamza in his throat with his spear. And Hamza was coming to him. He said, just a few meters from me, Hamza fell. Otherwise he's coming to kill him, to finish him. Even even the, the, the spear inside, Hamza radiallahu anhu. said, I, I stayed till Hamza I was satisfied that he died and left him. Hamza of course was very near to the camp of the Mushrikeen. Now Hind is waiting the news. Hamza came and said to Hind, Hamza, Hind, I've killed Hamza. So he killed your father, we killed his uncle. She was very happy and she started to scream her happiness. And she started to say poetry, praising them, praising them themselves and praising their own gods and goddesses. And then she gave Wahshi all the jewelries that, he had, that she had. And then she went to the Muslims, to the Muslim army, and he mutilated the bodies. Cut the nose, ears, and make them as pieces of art, just like necklaces, ear, ear, earrings, and everything. And all the ladies with her did the same. They, they gave the jewelries to the slaves, and they took the same thing. And subhanAllah, if you have a leader, whether in good or bad, will be followed. She was a leader in bad. They followed her. And she was the strongest. They followed her. That's why it's very dangerous. Especially if you have a kid. If you have a kid, and this kid is going with a bad company, make sure that they are not very strong in evil. Otherwise they will get him in trouble. They will get her in trouble. Make sure that they are good and very strong, effective in good. As Muhammad said, in the, as the poet said, in the when, you, when you have a friend, it will be almost an identical. Same. It will be the same. That's why it was very, very important. And it is very important to be aware of who, who you are with. Look at the rights. It only it needs three or four people to do something silly. What happened? It becomes uncontrollable. Look at anything. It starts with you, evil ones, and then it becomes outrageous. No one could control it. Because people imitate things. And by the way, people would be, could be hypnotized by the action of others. Maybe first we, we say it or we do it intentionally, but sometimes we just do it unintentionally. Like, if you are, it's just like what happened in, in especially for example, in, in, uh, in, in the mosque. Okay? In the mosque, let's say, people, there are many chairs in the mosque. People are used to sit on the chairs. Do you think during Muhammad's days, there were no elderly people, disabled people? How would they deal with it? They will sit on the ground. And sometimes, well, like, you'll see strong people. Praying on the chairs. God, they got used to it. Not because they can't do it. If you don't train yourself, you just get used to it. 
and because you see many people doing it, that's it. In the good side, if you hear, if you hear someone reading, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, at the end of it, Waladhaaleen, you say Ameen. Even if it's not in Salat, you say it because this is almost becoming accustomed to it. Now, this lady, Hind, took the uh, seven years of, uh, or uh, seven years, the, the, uh, the noses, the uh, ears of the Sahaba, of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then they left for Medina, for Mecca. Now, when they left for Mecca, or about to leave for Mecca, Abu Sufyan, who also was very, very, he hated Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi to the most. He came to Hamza and had his spear inside Hamza. Hamza is dead. And one of the Arabs saw him and said, Why did you do that? You can't do this to a dead person. He said, No, no, please keep it. Don't tell others. Because I'm doing it to the, because of the hatred that I have inside for this person. Then he left Hamza radiallahu anhu. Now, when they arrived in Mecca, celebrating the victory, of course, ha- uh, saying the poetry about their victorious um, times against Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, after a while, of course, they had the other uh, battle against Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the, um, uh, the Ahzab, about 10,000 people coming to fight Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inside Medina. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to do Umrah, the, the minor, the mini pilgrimage, which is not the one that happened in, 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 during the Hajj season. It could happen at, at any time. Where it comprises of uh, having uh, ihram, doing the tawaf, praying to, doing the sa'i, and then shaving or cutting the hair. Now, this lady, of course, she hates Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At the sixth year of the Hijrah, when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam decided to come there, he came there. And who notices what's happening there? And what they are doing? Muawiyah, her son. Muawiyah, the son of Hind, and the son of Abu Sufyan. He notices what, what the people of Muhammad Wasallam are doing to him. And how do they sacrifice themselves for Muhammad Wasallam? Then he decided to embrace Islam. Then he embraced Islam by himself. Muawiyah, when he embraced Islam, Secretly, he went to his, to his mother and said to him, to her, I embraced Islam. She said to him, did you? She said, yes. He said, okay, don't ever tell your father. He will be very angry with you if you say anything to him. Because he hates Muhammad and, and his companions. Don't do that. He will stop from giving you money. And he will even persecute you just like others. Now, Two years later, when they broke the treaty, and Muawiyah came, Ibn Abi Sufyan, to Muhammad Sallallahu to confirm it, because they killed the allies of Muhammad Sallallahu during a very well-known, excellent battle that Muhammad Sallallahu had, which wasn't really a battle, it was just like a conquer, because there were no fighting there. When he came to confirm the conditions of, of, the, of the treaty, or the truce, when he came, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam refused to do that. He didn't even talk to him. Now, when he came back, they were actually expecting Muhammad to come at any time. Now, when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to Mecca, it was very sudden. No one knew about his coming. 10,000 soldiers outside Mecca. Abu Sufyan saw, him, saw the, the lights, 10,000 lights, fires. Because Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, every one of you, light a fire. 10,000, imagine that. When he saw it, he said, wow, that's so much. Then Al-Abbas, radiallahu anhu, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uncle, who embraced Islam, went to find someone to tell about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's coming. Then he saw Abu Sufyan, the leader of Quraysh. And he said to him, come with me. Let's talk to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He went to talk to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The story is told. To cut it short, he talked with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and spoke. And he said to him, Abu Sufyan, embrace Islam. Huh? He said, no, I, I had doubt about that. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, okay, bring him tomorrow. SubhanAllah, in the morning, he embraced Islam. Then, 
Al Abbas, he said to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Hakim bin Hizam also embraced Islam at that time. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uncle, Abu uh, Al Abbas, he said to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Sufyan is the leader of Quraysh. You should give him something, a virtue. Then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, okay, whoever enters the house of Abu Sufyan will be saved, will be secured. Whoever enters his or her house and close it will be secured. Whoever enters the mosque and stay in it will be secured. Whoever enters the house of Hakim and Hizam will be also secured. Now, Abu Sufyan had only a few minutes to go and tell people this. So he came to tell them, Muhammad is coming and there is no way that you can fight him back. And then he said, whoever enters the house of Abu Sufyan will be saved. And his wife was looking at him. He said, what are you talking about? Are you saying we're not going to fight him? He said, well, there's no way that we can fight him. Then she, she wanted to stop him. And then the people said, your, your house is, wouldn't be enough for us. What should you do? He said, whoever enters his house and close it will be also saved. Then she started screaming him. She said, come and kill this traitor. Come and kill this fat old person. Just come and kill him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He said, Wallahi, I know what I'm talking about. You can't fight them back. She was very sad. Now, Muhammad Sallallahu entered. And this lady couldn't go out and fight. She went inside the house. At night, she was thinking. And then she had a dream. Radiallahu anha. Now, when she had this dream, she saw many things. In three, they said in three nights, and some say in only uh, one night. This lady, she said, I saw this dream that I, I was by myself trying to, uh, to find a place. And then I was called by, by Hubal, the leader of the, of the idols in, uh, for, the, for the Meccan people. And then she said, when I was called by him, I wanted to respond, but Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called me. So I went with Muhammad. And then she said, I was in the other dream, the next day dream. She said, I saw that I, I, I have, uh, I'm almost taken to hellfire. And I looked at it, and I saw Hubal. Hubal is calling me to come inside. And then I looked back, I saw Muhammad taking me with my clothes and pulling me for back. Until I couldn't see Hubal. And she said, in the morning, I went to a little statue that I have to worship. And I started kicking it. I said, you didn't benefit Anna. We didn't benefit anything from you. She started to slap, slap it on the face. And slap it on the face. She said, well, there's nothing that you could do. There is no benefit from you. And in the morning she said to Abu Sufyan, I wanted to go, I want to go and um, embrace Islam. Then Abu Sufyan, because he embraced Islam yesterday, she said, what, what happened to you? Yesterday you were saying such and such, and now you're changing? She said, when I saw them praying, and I saw them doing their sujood, I thought that this is the first time in my lifetime that we are worshipping truly before we're not actually worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then she said, when I saw them doing ruku, sujood, and standing qiyam, I, I found out that this is really the true religion that should be followed. Then Abu Sufyan was very smart. He said, well, after what you've done, don't go by yourself to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You should go with someone that is very close to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So she went with 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 Uthman radhiyallahu anhu. Other narrations that say she went with Umar radhiyallahu anhu. Then when she went with um, with Uthman, 
she went with the ladies. Almost the same ladies that they went with her in Uhud, they're almost with her to, to embrace Islam. You look at the company. That's why if the leader of the tribe embraces Islam, the whole tribe do. When, when, when a famous person embraces Islam, by the way, he doesn't leave. Maybe he's not embracing Islam, but he's still doing some silly things. But that affects the other, the followers, badly. That's why Muhammad Sallallahu will, will deal with the leaders in a very specific and very, very generous way, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, Muhammad Sallallahu she came. Muhammad Sallallahu didn't know anything about her. She, he didn't know her. And then, she started, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi started to talk to them and to tell them. And then, he started to say, you pledge allegiance to me, Muhammad Sallallahu that you don't associate any partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you do not steal and then she said the, 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 there is something that I should ask for and then Muhammad sallallahu continued so that, that's actually at the end and then he said sallallahu alayhi wa also should not fornicate and do adultery and then she said well the free woman could the free woman or is it really feasible that a woman, free woman, would fornicate? She wasn't even imagining that a righteous woman, a woman, who's a free woman, would fornicate or do adultery. Rather than to say, yeah, we will pledge that. She said, oh, it doesn't need hurrah. Now, and then Muhammad said, and don't kill your own children. Then she said, well, we brought them up when they are young and when they are old. They went to you and you killed them. <laughs> then Muhammad Sallallahu started to laugh. Umar started to laugh and those around started to laugh. And Muhammad Sallallahu recognized that this is a hint. That she was very truthful. And then he said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala killed him. Said us. And then he said, hint, and he read the, the ayah at the end of the sort uh, uh, about the bay'ah for the ladies mainly. And then she said to Muhammad Sallallahu he mentioned something about stealing. Abu Sufyan is very tight, very miser. He doesn't spend that much. And he doesn't even give me enough. Can I take from his money? Because I, I can't really, I, I should. Then. Abu Sufyan apparently was very close and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said to him what do you say Abu Sufyan? He said well something that you could survive on not, not everything then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said take what you would need not more than what you need now this lady after embracing Islam she was actually welcomed by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi when he, when he saw her uh, later, and then, then she saw Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, "Welcome to to you." Hint: This lady is very important now because she was so against Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and when she changes, she will be also so with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She said to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Before Islam, Wallahi, there was no one on the face of the earth that I hate the most more than you." And there is no one that I wanted to be humiliated and defamed like you and your family. But subhanAllah, now there is no one on the face of the earth that I love more than you. And there is no family of, of any family that I want to be elevated and in high position like your family. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, he, he, uh, he almost confirmed what she said and then he read some Quran on them. Then Hind said to Muhammad Sallallahu Okay, give us your hand so we pledge the allegiance. Muhammad Sallallahu said, no. No, I, I don't shake hands with women. And it wasn't right that Umar Radiallahu Anhu was telling them everything. Then he said to them, what I say to one lady is similar to what I say to one hundred lady. That's what Muhammad Sallallahu said to them. So, and they didn't shake hands with Muhammad Sallallahu and the pledge 
happened. After a while, this lady, radiallahu anha wa uh, gave Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sent something for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then she said to the slave girl who, who was bringing the food for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we have some sheep but they are not good enough. Because we want to have some more so we can actually uh, be generous to you. Then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed Allah, for, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for her and for her sheep. To an extent that the lady then related that they had so many sheep. Because she was hot tempered and Abu Sufyan was hot tempered, they couldn't live together that long. They separated in a way. Now, during the days of, after the death of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, of course, uh, she stayed in Mecca, but after the death of Muhammad sallallahu then uh, Umar radiallahu anhu arda continued, continued uh, Abu Bakr then Umar radiallahu anhu arda. Now, when Umar radiallahu anhu arda took the khilafa, he had Yazid, her son, as one of the emirs of Umar radiallahu anhu Now, Yazid was very, very good. And he was also very intelligent. One of the well-known Arabs, uh, very close to Muhammad in the family, and also very close to many of the Arab uh, Muhajirin in the family. And he did well. Now, when he died, Umar is the one to bring the news for them. It's to bring the news for Abu Sufyan and Hind. He came to them and said to them, Your son died. Of course, they were very sad. And he was the Amir. And then she asked, Who did you replace with? And then he said, With Muawiyah. She said, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate you. He was, she was thinking of the future as well. Muawiyah is to replace his brother, Yazid, because he died. Now, she was very close to Umar radiallahu anhu wa and Umar used to ask her and to consult her. During the battle of Al-Yarmouk, this lady radiallahu anhu wa ardaha was there, and Abu Sufyan was there. She was telling them, fight for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She was encouraging them, radiallahu anhu wa And of course, Abu Sufyan was the, the spokesperson and the orator that tells them and told, and told all sections. Telling them that it is your fight. If you are defeated from your side, it will be a defame for you and your family to come. So they were actually encouraged by what he said. Because if they were defeated, especially from their side, so everyone will be defending their side. And it's not only the words that I said, it's more than that. Because they understand the more in poetry, basically. Now, she radiallahu anha wa uh, took her own business. And then she borrowed from money from Umar radiallahu anhu arda. The money that she borrowed radiallahu anhu arda was from Bayt Mali Muslimin, from the budget for Muslims. When she borrowed the money, she told Umar radiallahu anhu arda, I want just to go and sell and buy. Muhammad, Umar radiallahu anhu arda says, okay, we'll give you some money. We'll lend you some money. She took the money, she went to different places to sell and buy, and she had some, some good business. And one day she, she decided to go to her son, Muawiyah. When she decided to go to her son, Muawiyah, she knew that Abu Sufyan is coming. Then she sent for her son. She said to Muawiyah, radiallahu anhu wa She said to Muawiyah, Muawiyah, now, what do you do when your, when your father is coming? Don't give him from Umar's money, but I'll send you some money. To give him from this money. Because Umar is very tough. He will ask you. She knows Umar radiallahu anhu. So she sent him Muawiyah. Uh, plenty of money. It was actually everything. And then he gave it to his father. Then Abu Sufyan was asking uh, Hind. What happened to your business? She said no, it's going alright. Alhamdulillah. We benefited, etc., etc. When he returned back, and Abu Sufyan was the guarantee, 
he was actually the guarantor for the for him to return the money back. So he guaranteed that. So Umar radiallahu anhu. Now, when when they returned back, then Umar radiallahu anhu asked Muawiyah, where did you give the money from? Where did you give your father from? I mean, Umar is very very strict radiallahu anhu and he told him. See, see how how she knew that Umar would do that. And then he said, all right. Then, because he asked also Muawiyah, uh, Abu Sufyan, Abu Sufyan said, the first he asked Abu Sufyan, did you get this money from? He said, from my son. Son, where did you get this money from? From my mother. And he knew that his mother took the money from, she, she lent it from my Baitan Muslim. Now, the period finished, and he, Umar radiallahu anhu said to, uh, to hint, now return the money. He said, Wallahi, I don't have that much money to return. And he said, well, the guarantor is, is Abu Sufyan. Come here. We'll, we'll, we'll keep you till she repays. And it was repaid almost from the same money that she paid <laughs> to, to Muawiyah. Now, this lady, radiallahu anhu is very, very, and very amazing in the way she responds, especially in Arabic, uh, to, uh, to the... Uh, to the people, and also when she was praising uh, the uh, the family of, of of Quraysh, and she was praising also when they left um, uh, Uhud and killed many people. They said, "Well, this time is for the time that we did during the days of of Badr. Now we are where we could go pride. We could be uh, having our heads high because we did what we did to you." Now. Hind radiallahu anhu ardaha as we said after she embraced Islam everything almost was removed from her heart which is against Islam and replaced love affection for the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Muhammad sallallahu said a hadith I, I remember this hadith and I repeatedly say it Muhammad sallallahu said al-nasu ma'adim khiyarun fil jahiliyya khiyarun fil islam idha faqih people are different it's just like from different nations and from different places and different in nature. Just like minerals. Hadith is actually using minerals. They're different. Khiyarun fil jahliya. The best of them pre-Islam would be the best after Islam if they understand. Now think of all of the Sahaba. All of them are new convert to Islam. They just embrace Islam. Bakr embraces all of them all of the Sahaba of Muhammad Sallallahu those who are actually not known very much are actually youngsters or born in Islam they, don't, they did contribute of course but not as much as those who embraced Islam during the days of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi now this lady radiallahu anha wa ardaha of course after embracing Islam you could just imagine that everything she did and she told Muhammad Sallallahu and she discussed this with Abu Sufyan because Abu Sufyan said to, him, to her when she wanted to embrace Islam, after you've done what you've done, because she, she, she did something outrageous against Hamza radiallahu anhu wa It wasn't right that she cut Hamza's abdominal and took his liver and wanted to lick it, to eat it, but she couldn't. She spat it off. She couldn't eat it. Muhammad sallallahu was so angry with that with what they did specially, not only with Hamza, with many people of the Sahaba. Now this hatred is changed into love for Muhammad Sallallahu and for, for, uh, for, for Islam. Now, after of course embracing Islam and being with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi for quite a few, uh, almost a year and a half, and then being with, uh, with the Sahaba of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi the ones very close to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she, radiallahu anhu wa arda, continued to be, to advise Muawiyah, radiallahu anhu wa arda, very well, because she knew that Muawiyah will have a future. And if this person, Muawiyah, will do good, and treat good, and deal with others in a good way, that person will be also a continuation of her offsprings. She brought Muawiyah in the best manner. One example of her upbringing to Muawiyah radiallahu anhu 
Muawiyah when he became the Khalifa. We talk about the trade of Muawiyah. Sha'arat Muawiyah. This Muawiyah radiallahu anhu he knew how to deal with people. Ibn Zubayr, Abdullah ibn Zubayr radiallahu anhu one day wrote a letter to Muawiyah. Telling Muawiyah that your people, Muawiyah, to Muawiyah, just like this. To Muawiyah, your people took my land. Return it back or... And he sent the letter. Then Muawiyah called his son, Yazid. And he said to Yazid, what do you think of this? He said, what do you think? We send an army. The beginning of the army in Medina and the end of it is just near us, in Damascus. We deal with him. We can't, we can't just accept this. He said, no, no, not like this. You don't take people like this. You don't win people like this. Then he wrote for Abdullah ibn Zubair. He said, we've heard from the son of the son of the disciples, the son of the disciples of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, referring to a Zubair, that he is angry with one of us, one of the, the emirs, that they took his land. Let him know that I will leave the land for him. And we don't want the son of the disciple of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be angry with us. And he saw him and, and sent it. Then Zubair, the next one, sent him. To Amir al-Mu'mineen. That's, this is the way he, he won people, radiallahu anhu. To Amir al-Mu'mineen, to the Amir of, of believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for what you did. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you more and more wisdom and response. I knew that you would be responding in a good way. I don't want the land. You can keep it. But I wanted to make sure that you, we have a good khalifa. Or other words that he mentioned. Then he called Yazid. And then he said to Yazid, look at the answer. Now the first letter was without anything to Muawiyah and nothing else. The second one, just like glorifying Muawiyah. This is the way you can win people with the, not with fighting them by the way. You win people with dealing with them. Dealing with them, you win them. Fighting them, you don't win them. If, it, if you win them through force, you're not actually winning them. You're suppressing them. But if you win them through dealing with them and convincing them and making them your friend, that's it. The most dangerous enemy, the most dangerous sword or the most dangerous weapon against the enemy is to befriend the enemy and to diffuse the tension. Look at Muhammad Sallallahu How did he marry from different tribes? He married from them to diffuse the tension. When he married from the Jews, Safiya, after that there was no war between Muhammad Sallallahu and them. It stopped. It was only later during the days of Umar radiallahu anhu when something happened and he told them when they killed someone, he told them just leave the place. Now, to diffuse it is the most important thing. That's why uh, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu learned a lot from his mother. Hind radiallahu anhu Allah. She wrote him with a good character, generous character, as also with the utmost way of dealing with others, and very intelligent. His dealing with Ali radiallahu anhu Allah was of the most intelligent way of dealing with another man. Very intelligent. Radiallahu anhu Allah. Now with this we uh, finish talking about this great lady radiallahu anhu Allah. She died at the uh, 14th year of Hijrah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during the days of Umar radiallahu anhu arda with only five or so years in Islam but with a very effective life to come after her especially for her son Muawiyah radiallahu anhu arda and from Muawiyah there's a generation of Bani Umayyah who ruled for almost uh, a reign of around till about 100 and. 